AMD is going to dominate another market segment, one that they're already dominating, but in a new way. All of Wi-Fi is apparently vulnerable and brain computer typing. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet so that you can get back to your day. And in case you want to suggest some tech news that you find out there on the interwebs, you can do so over on our Discord server. You can check it out at the link in the video description. Make sure to post it in the tech news channel, not general. I lose my crap every single time somebody does that just just for clarity's sake letting you know but let's move on into talking about the hottest news of the day which is AMD is going to be making laptops yeah that's right in partnership with Samsung but it's different because it looks like they're going to be competing with Apple and their M1 chips because Samsung and AMD have partnered up to make Exynos chips for Samsung's upcoming flagship phones but the latest report is that there's going to be an unveiling veiling of a premium Exynos chip that can be used in laptops in the second half of this year. We're already expecting a ton of GPU performance to come out of the new flagships that Samsung was expected to announce on these Exynos chips. Preliminary benchmarks that have come out show that it's a super solid contender for even beating Apple in the GPU department. So having this partnered up for a higher end chip that comes in a more M1 form factor, the ARM architecture to make it so that it's a direct competitor is really great. However, the thing that you have to ask and you have to question, regardless of the fact that AMD's GPU is going to be an OK match for Samsung's ARM CPUs, what about Windows? That's obviously going to be the bane of this device's existence because Mac OS is doing a great job at making sure that there's X64 emulation. So both the programs that were running on Intel chips can also run on the new M1 MacBook. However, there's not quite that on Windows side, at least for Windows ARM. So there has to be some emulation that pops up or a third competitor to come into the ARM scene for operating systems and just kind of dethrone Microsoft from where they are with Windows, but with these new ARM chips that we're expecting to start dominating in the next generation of mobile devices. How far out a more effective Windows ARM is, is not quite clear, but a new Exynos laptop in the second half of 2021 that could actually put up some decent numbers against Apple would be welcome because Apple is absolutely crushing it in the thin and light department when it comes to their M1 MacBook Air, MacBook Pro, and obviously the iPad Pro is coming out as well. What do you think of Samsung and AMD bringing their partnership to laptops? Is this welcome competition that you're seeing? Do you think that this is the direction that the entire PC market is moving into with ARM processors now being at the forefront of everything. But in reality, let's just be quite clear here. This would be an NVIDIA Samsung AMD partnership because you know, NVIDIA is buying ARM. So it's all NVIDIA now. NVIDIA with Apple, NVIDIA with AMD and, and Samsung. NVIDIA, it's just that I see why they bought ARM. It was a good idea, as long as it passes regulation. And it's a good idea for you to check out today's episode sponsor, ButcherBox, my friends. This is my empty ButcherBox, except for I uh, brought out one of the chicken things because I this is all we have left. We're anticipating our new arrival later this week. But your butcher box comes in a box just like this, heavily insulated so that if you accidentally get it delivered while you're still on holiday and you come back three days later after it's already been sitting at your doorstep in the hot Florida sun, fun fact, still frozen. So their shipping is quite good, but the meat is also great as well because it's not just meat that's delivered right to your door, but it's also premium meat. It's 100% grass-fed beef, free-range organic chicken, pork that's been raised crate-free, and wild-caught seafood. The meat tastes great and it's affordable, coming in at under $6 per meal. For my family of five, this suits our needs perfectly. We don't have as much time to go out to the grocery store as we would need, especially with our special needs child. So having things delivered, especially high quality to me is such a great deal for us. We love our butcher box. I would highly suggest that you maybe check it out for you and your family. And if you use the link in the video description in your first box, you'll get the free BBQ bundle, which gives you two New York strip steaks, six burgers and five pounds of drumsticks for free. Just two steaks, six burgers and five pounds of drumsticks for free. Click the link. Try it. That's a heckin ton of free meat. That's a great BBQ bundle. Yes, 
Thanks to ButcherBox for sponsoring today's episode of Hot News. Let's talk a little bit more about AMD because there's filings that are coming out with regards to the mid-tier Navi GPUs that we're expecting, the 6600 XT and 6600 popping up in EEC filings, as well as popping up in forums with more specific specifications. The 6600 XT is supposed to have 2048 stream processors, eight gigabytes of VRAM, and then able to mine Ethereum at 30 mega hash. The 6600 is a little less than that, at 27 mega hash and I think it's telling of the entire leaker situation that we're not getting gaming benchmarks leaked first we're getting mining benchmarks leaked first okay according to this post on the forum this should be one of the most prevalent cards that AMD will be able to produce in the second half of 2021 but Consider the fact that uh, they probably are gonna be snapped up by miners. So just uh, you know, don't hold your breath that you're gonna be able to grab one. But you should soon be able to grab a new motherboard, an X570S chipset supposed to be released soon. And MSI has leaked images of theirs, the MSI X570S Carbon without a fan on the chipset, just more power efficient. You probably don't need to upgrade it. It's gonna be good for the people who are buying into the ecosystem for the first time, but not likely gonna be something that you need to swap up for. But that's not the only thing that got leaked by MSI. No, they also leaked the 3080 Ti because there was an MSI website listing of the 3080 Ti, which was not announced by Nvidia yet at all doesn't technically exist, but MSI confirming that it exists. And then also EEC filings by Pallet show that there's not only a 3080 Ti coming, but also a 3070, 3050 Ti coming as well. As you can see here, that all means that there's new graphics cards on the way that you can't buy. It's a great deal, free because you're not paying anything. I love the current market. I'm saving so much money. Also, just to round out the three team of GPUs, we had AMD with the 6600 XT. We have Nvidia with the 3080 Ti. And now we have Intel with their Arctic Sound 1T and 2Ts featuring up to 7,680 cores. As you can see here, these are more than likely going to be based in server. As you can look at that where they don't have a fan. So you have the blowy fans just slotting all of that funnel air through those GPUs, keeping them cool. Not yet known what the performance of these are gonna be like, but 32 gigabytes of HBM2E memory, 300 watt TDP, means that they're gonna be chunky fast boys as long as you know they get the firmware and all that stuff right behind the scenes. But Intel's been working on getting stuff done behind the scenes when it comes to quantum computing. Intel saying that they fixed something that was broke when it came to quantum computing with their Horse Ridge cryogenic control processor, they were able to run electronics on the cryogenics, meaning that it was colder. But the reason that this matters is that they're now going to be able to bundle those potentially on the chip because they developed electronics that you normally are at room temperature to actually work on the cryogenic environment, which means that you can make the entire quantum assembly a lot more concise and compact, kind of like what Apple did with the M1 chips. They put the RAM on the SOC, right? That's kind of the idea of what's going on behind here and the breakthrough that Intel's announcing with their Horse Ridge quantum quantum computing tech, they're gonna be able to consolidate more stuff on the quantum package. Are you ready to go quantum? Me too. And now we're just waiting on quantum computers to break the entire way the world works, cryptography, just stock trading. They can do things so much faster. So let's get into the GameStop crypto thing update that I do. GameStop. Stop. There's been nothing to talk about for like a week and a half. It's not a meme stock if it doesn't do anything. Is it a dead meme? Should I keep it in? Let me know in the comments. We got Bitcoin. It's just red in the crypto market besides Ethereum, which is up just a little bit. Bitcoin down 4.34%. You see it kind of just uh, fell off a ski slope right there. Ethereum, Dogecoin falling off a ski slope as well, down 11% on the day. Ethereum up ever so slightly, falling down the ski slope from a high of 4,300 in the last day. It just seems like they're all following the pattern of, uh, I mean, it's summer here in the United States. So my guess is that they made a trip down to the Southern hemisphere and just found a, a nice little black diamond to go down. Now let's talk about your Wi-Fi. Did you know it's vulnerable? Yeah, most of it is, okay? According to a new report, there's widespread flaws in just the Wi-Fi protocol, which leaves millions of devices open to frag attacks. So the flaws are tied to the Wi-Fi standard with bugs dating back to 1997. Theoretically, if exploited, the vulnerabilities would allow the attacker within radio range to steal user information or attack devices. However, the amount of compromised devices is not quite clear. 
It's not happening in all Wi-Fi devices uh, because there are security measures that can be put into place above and beyond just the normal stuff that's been going on, as well as the fact that Microsoft is working on some patches. So you don't necessarily have to worry that your Wi-Fi is bugs, but I mean, the CIA is already spying on you. Who cares if another frag attack takes your internet away? Those were, I conflated two separate things right there, friends. But don't conflate M1 Max with Intel Max because they're not the same thing at all. We got new preliminary benchmarks coming out of the M1 iMac and it's just, it's not looking good for Intel. The M1 iMac is 78% faster than the Core i3 previous version and 42% faster than the i7 in single core and in multi-core, it's 124% faster than the i3 and 16% faster than the i7. It does look like those M1 iMacs are performing like the M1 chips would expect to be performing. It's not necessarily a huge revelation. They're just doing really, really well. And it's also been reported that those iMacs have begun shipping out. The delivery date was anticipated to be May 21st, but some users are noting that theirs have already shipped out from Apple and they might receive them just a little bit earlier. But you're not gonna get this a little bit earlier. The ID Buzz, also known as the Autonomous Electric Taxi Van by Volkswagen, probably not gonna roll out until 2025. However, it's been announced that they're working with Argo's AI self-driving system in order to get all of this taken care of so that you can drive around in a VW bus with Argo saying, that we're building our technology and partnering with Volkswagen in a way that really sets us apart from what others are doing. And we think it really puts us in a position to deliver a safe, smart, and scalable product to deliver on the promise of autonomous driving. They're expecting this to be level four. And one of the big things with partnering with Argo AI is that they're developing really advanced LiDAR systems, which are in stark contrast to the optical, just completely vision-based systems that Tesla's developing. Everybody's trying to get to autonomous driving. Which way's right? Which way's wrong? You get, I mean, I hope they know which way is right because that's the whole premise of driving. Moving into the only thing that's better than my segues, that's brain computer interfaces. Again, this is something that tremendously excites me on a personal level, just seeing my special needs son who has so many challenges of expression because his body doesn't allow him to express the things that his mind is thinking. He can receive language so much better than he can express it. And there's a new neural implant that allowed a paralyzed person to type up to 90 characters a minute which is just absolutely phenomenal at 99% accuracy. This is in stark contrast to the ways that they were doing it before where they had the person just tap little letters that were on the screen. However, with this, what they did was have him imagine doing handwriting and then those character inputs actually resulted in higher accuracy as well as faster input. It's not quite clear when this brain computer interface might be rolling out to other people as this is just a clinical trial and it's not yet a complete clinical viable system according to the researchers, but I'll leave a link in the video description for you to check out the video where they essentially just show the man who's able to now communicate much faster, much more accurately, and according to the report with about half a second lag, which is not bad at all, especially just dealing with a child who struggles to express himself. If he could do it in half a second, that would make life so much easier as opposed to the inbuilt delay that he has as a human. So I'm excited for this. I hope you are too. And you might consider being excited for Apple to get into the console game. Maybe not as excited as bring computer interfaces, but just like, you know, gaming excited. So check out yesterday's episode of Hot News right there, and I'll see you tomorrow, my friends. Cheers.